Hello and welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I am looking at Q4 OS, but I'm looking at the KDE Plasma version. Now, ordinarily, I've always looked at the Q4 OS Trinity version because what sets Q4 OS apart from other distributions is the fact that it's lightweight and the Trinity desktop is what makes it lightweight. Now, I've noticed when I've used the Trinity desktop recently that it's looking a little bit tired. And when I come to the review of the Trinity desktop and compare it to this in a short while, in another video, um, I'm gonna be explaining why I, I think Q4 OS needs modernization. And I think Plasma is the way forward for them. Then there's the problem, what sets Q4 OS apart from other distributions that use KDE? So this is Q4 OS. I haven't done anything to it. Uh, all I've done is install OBS Studio. So we'll start off with the first thing. We're going to look at the internet first, internet connection, to make sure we've got one. Now I'm on a wired, but you can see that you can connect to a wireless if you want to. We'll talk about other hardware afterwards, but let's install those proprietary codecs. You want those if you want to watch certain video formats, etc. So we're going to install that. And you can see it's got a Windows S style installer, um, similar to the Q4 OS Trinity version. And that's that done. Uh, there's various other things you can do. You can run the desktop profiler, and what that does, um, Q4 OS comes with various different versions. You've got the fully featured, you've got the basic, and you've got ultimate minimal. Now, I went for the fully featured desktop, um, but if you went for one of the others and you want fully featured, you can do that, and presumably you can go back the other way. You can install applications, you can do screen scaling if your screen doesn't look quite right. You can set auto login, and you can look at hardware info, and there's more options down here. Uh, so how to donate to Q4S, how to support them on Patreon, and their, their online documents. So let's, before we look at installing applications, um, I'm going to close this down. Let's look at the rest of the hardware. So we're going to start off with the Bluetooth. Bluetooth mode. Now you saw it failed the first time there. That's not uncommon with Bluetooth, to be fair. Connecting. And there you see it's now connected. Disconnected. Let's look at printing. Now that's a step up from the Q4 OS Trinity. Q4 OS Trinity doesn't have the Bluetooth enabled by default. So if we go to printing, You can see it's already found my printer, but it's also telling me there's a printer support package. But you don't need to install it, but you can if you want to. So I'm going to do that. And that's quite a nice feature telling you that you need the support package. And that's it done. My printer is sorted. So let's look at what applications come installed with the full desktop of Q4 OS. So you can see it's actually quite nippy in terms of performance. It, it runs quite well. So under development, we've got the text editor. Under games, we've got uh, Solitaire. We have Gwenview, which is an image viewer, the PDF viewer, and we've got the whole LibreOffice suite. And then we've got a scanning program as well. The web browser, you've got Chromium, and then you've got the KDE tool, so uh, remote desktop, uh, torrent program. You've got Thunderbird email, IRC client, and KDE Connect, so you can connect your phone easily to your desktop. Under multimedia, we've got the Clementine audio player. Uh, we've got a disc writing program. I installed OBS Studio, and then we have VLC media player. Under office, we have the full LibreOffice suite. And as before, we had the PDF viewer. And that's about it. If you want to install applications, you've got the Discover Software Center. And this comes with standard with KDE anyway. And you can see Flathub is enabled by default. And what that means is you can install flat packs. So if you want Chrome, you can get Chrome. If you want Steam, you get Steam. And if you want Spotify, you got Spotify. So it's easy to install flat packs using Q4 
Q4OS um, using the Plasma version. Let's have a look at the other install. Let's look at the other installer. And this gives you common programs that you might like. So uh, for instance, uh, if you wanted Chrome, it's, it's there. If you want Vivaldi, uh, you've got Spotify client. And all you have to do is click install application and you get the Q4 OS style, which looks win old Windows-esque style installer. You've got a look switcher, so we will look at that shortly. Uh, Nvidia drivers if you want those, Discord. You've got the Q4 OS imager if you want to put Q4 OS onto another drive. Uh, Falcon, which is my favorite web browser, so we are going to install that. Microsoft Edge, if you want that. Easy flat pack um, for easily installing flat packs. We're already using KDE, so it doesn't get much easier than using Discover. Uh, Dropbox, Proton. And you see there's a whole host of tools that you can install using Q4 OS. Now you can see Q4 OS images already installed, uh, the welcome screen's already installed and software center. But what we're gonna do is look at that look switcher. So that's that installed, so we'll just click next there and click finish. And we can do the same with all the other things that we've installed like that. So that's all the installations done. I'm gonna actually close this down now. And you see we've got welcome to the look switcher. Um, and it says, if you want to apply a new theme and complete, you will need to tick apply desktop and window layout from, from theme, uh, check box bottom left, click okay to run the theme selector. So I'm not gonna show that again. And uh, we're just gonna click okay. And these are the themes available by default. So you can see you've got a Windows themes available to you. Now before we start messing with themes, there's something I do want to do. And I'm going to install Caden Live. And you can see up here, you can choose where you're installing from, whether it's FlatHub or uh, Debian. I'm going to do the Debian one, and there's a reason for it, and I'll come back to it once it's installed. That's that. Now, let's run that Caden Live. Now, in the Trinity desktop, when you run Caden Live, all of these icons are gone, and it doesn't seem to be an easy way of getting them back. So to get around that on the Trinity desktop, I installed the app image version of Caden Live. Now I could have gone for the flat pack, but I, want, I wanted to steer clear of installing flat packs on a machine that's supposed to be lightweight. Uh, in this case, um, I'm not going for lightweight, I'm just going for Q4 OS KDE. So I don't care about that too much, but you can see the Debian version of Caden Live is working perfectly fine. And the reason I wanted to do that for the look switcher is because I'm wondering if when you run one of these, is it gonna make it fail? So if you are sadistic and you want a Windows 10 dark theme, you just click that. And you can see applying a desktop layer will delete the current set of desktop panels, docs and widgets, replace them with what the theme specifies. So we're gonna click apply to that. And now you have a Windows-esque style layout. And it's actually been done quite well. Uh, if you think of Anduin, 
and now Anduin's quite heavy when you install a Windows type interface on top of GNOME but this is a Windows type interface on top of KDE and it's the perfect desktop environment for doing this sort of thing by the way so if you like the Windows 10 although it feels more Windows 11 -y, if you like this look and feel then you can install that using Q4OS and it's been done quite well so if we want to go again We can go for the the light version of the same thing. And it's, it's really done quite nicely. And we'll go again. And you can go for uh, Windows 7. Just minimize it this what time. So if you're nostalgic for Windows 7, this does that. And then we can go even more old school and we can go Windows XP and there you have it But if you want to go back to a standard KDE style look, you can do that. Well, we've got Windows 11, Windows 10, we've got Future Dark, I don't know what that is. Actually, I think I installed Windows 11, which is why it did look like Windows 11. I mean, that's quite a nice theme, isn't it? Except where's the menu gone? Ah, oh, it's up the top. I'm not sure about this one, it's not for me. Let's try the Windows 10 one. Ah, so that looks more like Windows 10, doesn't it? Helps if I install the Windows 10 one. Uh, it really just looks like KDE with the Windows 10 wallpaper. So um, you can also do this sort of stuff with KDE anyway. So if we go to KDE, so if we right click and we go desktop. Now something strange happened there, it actually logged me out. Uh, had to log back in again, but here we are back in. But if we go here and we go desktop and wallpaper, you can get new wallpapers this way. You can install like that and you can make KDE yours there are other themes that you can install from here so you can get new themes via this way uh, so you don't have to use a Q4 OS they've just basically installed their themes in here and they've got their own look switcher that does the same thing so if you do want a new theme just go up here and get new and then you can see all the different types of themes there are 
Now, if we look at the system monitor, you can see it's using 2.3 gigabytes. Now, when you first boot up, it's actually using 1.2 because I've got OBS running and I've run a lot of processes in between. There's some being held on to. So it's now up at the 2.3 gigabytes. So it's not lightweight. The Q4 OS um, Plasma isn't considered lightweight as far as I can tell. But that is the end of the video. So this month I am using Q4 OS on a month on. I'm splitting it between the Trinity desktop and the KDE Plasma desktop. Now the KDE Plasma, I think, it's just basically Debian with the KDE Plasma desktop and a few other tools on top. So it's quite nice in terms of the way they've done the themes, but you're not getting much more than your basic Debian on this. Likewise, with the lightweight version, Q4 OS really is the only operated system that I know that's still using the Trinity desktop. Now, there might be a reason for that. Uh, if I, if I look at the Trinity desktop and I compare it to the LXQ desktop that I used with Lubuntu, then Lubuntu is head and shoulders ahead of the Trinity desktop. It's, it's beginning to creak a little bit as far as I am concerned. But anyway, that is the end of the video. If you check out the description of this video, you will see this month's newsletter. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, hit the like button if you liked the video, and if you want to become a member, there's a membership panel down there, and that gives you access to new emojis and little icons for when you comment, and it basically helps support the channel. But that is it. I will see you next time on Everyday Linux User.